In a previous video presentation that I like to call Honey, I Shrunk the Device, we looked at how all of this technology here now appears in a single module AFDD RCBO. If you haven't already watched that video, click the eye above our head and go back and revisit that video. What are we looking at today, Joe? I think we're going to take one of these apart. Sorry, we're going to, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. This is a video, Joe. We're yep. going to take apart an AFDD. For sure. We're going to drill it open and we're going to have a look at what's going on inside here. Do you remember when we looked at the surge protection device oh, yeah. and we busted that open? We had a look at what was going on on the inside. We learned so much from ourselves, didn't we? Stuff we, we weren't aware of. We did. So I think we've got to open this up and see what's going on inside so we can start to understand how it's working. Typical point. Pick up that double yep. module, yep. AFDD there. Now hold that one. Yours seems a little lighter. Yeah, doesn't it just? Yeah. And that makes me really curious. I'm, I'm as curious to see what's not in here as much as I am what is in here. Oh yeah, good yeah. thinking. Yeah. Because I can't understand, I can't imagine that they've managed to get in here all the bits and bobs you need for an MCB, yeah. an RCD, and an AFDD. So you yeah. think things might be missing? I, I can't imagine that there's a bimetallic strip in here. I can't imagine there's an electromagnetic coil in here, that you've got the little toroidal current transformer for monitoring the, uh, the RCD protection. I just, I just can't see it. So I think when we open this up, we're just gonna see a big flat PCB with a little lever that just kicks that off when it's time to switch off. Okay. I can't understand how they've managed to get all that in there. I want to know what's going on inside. Well, as always, Joe, I'm a very generous guy. I'll throw you a bone. So once we've got this open, I'll let you explain what's inside <laughs> the device. That's great. And to be honest, if you want to come and see amazing technology like this, then please check the description below because you'll find a link to our eFix live feed events. And I reckon if we manage to get this in pieces and it survives the ordeal, we should take that to our live feed event so people can actually have a look at it without taking one apart themselves. Okay, I think we've teased it for long enough. Joe's going to explain what's going on inside a miniature AFDD. Joe's going to grab his drill and open it up for starters and then we'll see. So in front of me, I've got a Crabtree Starbreaker designed single module AFDD RCBO in one unit. How many of you out there have actually fitted them? Joe, what do you reckon? I don't think there's very many. <laughs> I think okay. they're in the minority. So if not many people have fitted them, how many people do you think have taken one apart? Even less. Okay, so let's join the club maybe of not <laughs> having fitted one recently, but certainly let's join the club of maybe not many. And let's see if we can take the side off this Crabtree device. Fantastic. So, now you have to bear with me because I've just come fresh from my job as a mime artist. So we're just going to have to uh, bear with me while we try and drill through this. So we've got these rivets on here and hopefully we're going to be able to drill those out and then take the side off this. So this could be quite exciting. Let's see what we can find inside here. I'm going to try and use my arm like a, a drill press and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so we've taken the head off that. Now I think at this point we'll just pause and just see if we can punch that through if this is going to work. Okay, so we'll just see if we can tap this rivet through. Ooh. Yeah, that's on its way out, so that's good. And actually, hopefully, maybe hmm. if we just get a pair of pliers on the underside of that, we'll be able to whip that out. Okay, so I've got my side cutters here, and I reckon I'll be able to... Yeah, there it is. Okay. There we go. So okay. that's that removed. Okay. Happy okay. days. So we'll uh, drill the rest of these out, knock those uh, rivets out, and then we'll see what's on the inside. Okay, right, so that's all drilled. Give them all a tap. little tap. There we go, that's, there we go. That one's on its way. That one's on its way. That one I slipped, so that one's nearly out already. <laughs> right, let's take that out of there. And we'll have a look. Yeah, that one's just gonna need a little bit more of a bosh. So we've got that one out. And then we've got some slightly different designs of rivets there, so they might need just a little bit more of a, a little bit more of a thwack there. So we'll see if we can just get that out. Um, just needs a bit more. 
bit more depth on those ones. There we go, that's it. Ah, look at that. There's another one. Yes, thank you. And there is another one there as well. Okay. Happy days. Right, so we've got the rivets out. So personally, I think that's the hard part because looking at this now, Gary, you can see we've just got these sort of plastic clips on the front. We'll need to get that little metal uh, sort of joining part off there as well. And then we can have a look at what's actually on the inside. Okay then, Joe. So on closer inspection, we think we've got two straps that we're going to have to remove and yep. that top section there. So maybe we've done the easy part. We'll find out in a moment, won't we? We'll give it a go. So let's see what we can find here. So I reckon if I can just get under there, that's that. Very easy. There we go. Well, it takes years of skill, Gary, to be able to do this kind of thing. Manual dexterity, you know. And then we're going to have a look at the top side and see... Yep. If we can get this open. Pride after a fall, is it? Yeah, I was just thinking I might, <laughs> I might regret saying that now. <laughs> come on, come right, that side's there, all so. good. Get that there, get that there. There we go. And that side. Okay, all right, something's happening. Okay. Do we need the plastic um, uh, catch off there? Yes, is that holding I think it together? We so might, pull yeah. That, yeah, that should just pull straight off. Maybe with a better tool. Let's see. It oh. needs to slide off the side a little bit, doesn't it? Mm -mm -mm. And look at this, we've come all this way only to be foiled by the uh, by the catch on the back. Which mm -mm. ironically pop off all the time when you don't want them to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this has come off a little bit uh, less skillfully, I think it's fair to say that bit. <laughs> we'll, be... well, we'll leave the first bit in about your dexterity <laughs> yeah. and the handle Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll be refitting that. And of course what's happened is the top snapped back together again. Mm -hmm. It's always the way, isn't it? Yeah. Always the way. There we go. Right, so it's actually it's actually sort of two-sided, I think. So let's have a look at... First time I've ever seen inside an AFDD, guys. You don't open one regularly? No, this is, not a, okay. this is not a regular thing for me. Okay. Exciting times, we'll do the big reveal. Wow. wow. There's not, not as much in there as you think, is there? No, that's quite interesting. So I can see a couple of things in there I vaguely recognise. Now, that is interesting, actually, because there's stuff in there that I was not expecting to see, actually. And it is in there, so that is deeply interesting. Yeah, let's have a... I think the other side needs to come off as well. Hopefully we can get the other side off without the whole thing falling apart. So we'll turn that over. Okay, without it falling apart, it's already falling apart. <laughs> okay, so maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll analyse this side first and then we'll have a look at, uh, at the other side in a moment. So we've opened up one side of the AFDD, Joe, and I think this is a game of two halves. Mm. So looking at this side, I'm not familiar with much that's going on there. <laughs> However, we've had a sneaky look at the other side and we went, <sighs> Well, it's interesting because when we started talking about making this video, we sort of said, well, what, what is it going to be to look at inside here? What's going to be going on? But actually, now we have had a little sort of sneaky peek. There is an awful lot to see. And, and we also, didn't we, we said, well, we'll mostly be talking about what's not in there. But it's quite interesting the things that are in here is that there's an awful lot going on. So first of all, you can you can see here, this is the Crabtree Starbreaker. So we've got the buzz bar connection down here, the pin that just pushes into the uh, the buzz bar there with the, the screwless contact, which we love. We think that's fantastic. Yeah, we uh, did. Fantastic product. Um, so you can see there that you've got your uh, line connection goes on to this blue conductor, which is not the neutral. That's the line conductor that confused us to start with. And then if you just look very carefully down inside there, you can see it passes through a little uh, toroidal um, current transformer effectively, yep. which okay. we're familiar with from your classic RCD, RCBO uh, type technology. We've then got up this side, we've got the uh, rather lovely uh, PCB. Uh, Gary's going to explain all about that later. It's, it's green. green it's green. It's just down here, it's green. Okay. <laughs> well so it does look like some fairly beefy components on there, some rather uh, interesting stuff. So we might, we might have a look at that later. But again, what's coming out of here, and this is, this is where we might get easily confused, you can see there's these two little connections that go on to this coil here. Now again, instantly, your brain is going, ah, now, inside an MCB, Gary, what do we normally find in there that acts as the coil? Yeah, this would be the part that would be for when we've got excess current creates a massive magnetic field and causes the mechanism to trip. But this is a 40 amp device and just even looking at the thickness of those windings, it doesn't suggest to me that that is doing that job for this device. Absolutely not. The conductor is far too thin. If fault current was to flow through there... Hundreds or thousands just, of amps. That would just melt, wouldn't it? That would well, just it, be destroyed. Well, so. it'd work then, wouldn't it? It'd, it'd <laughs> stop it working. However, it's performing not the same function, but a similar function. It, it's Obviously, it's a solenoid 
solenoid that gets triggered by the PCB. Yeah. So when this is detecting uh, the arc fault current that is, is flowing, when it's detecting the um, arc in the circuit, uh, this is going to trigger this, which pulls the plunger up and actually disconnects the supply going out of here. Now, there is one quite interesting little thing here, Gary, that uh, we're, we're sort of intrigued by. Um, we're not going to move this around too much because we don't want all these things to come pinging out whenever we, uh, <laughs> when we switch this on. But just down here, underneath the operating switch down here, is the little LED panel that glows. It's also the test button. And if you look very, very carefully, there's a tiny, tiny little LED there mounted on a PCB. And it's actually mounted, it's sort of using the reflective element of this to... Uh, show when the LED is on. So it's actually pointing downwards, the LED itself to start with. But when it turns on, it'll obviously reflect off this face here and then you'll be able to see the lamp there. So I'm wondering if that carries on to the other side actually for, to get the different colours or, or what's going on there. So it'll be interesting just to confirm that when we flip it over and have a look at the other side. That's interesting, Joe, but actually we like to look at things that are familiar to us. Mm. And I think when we flip this round, we can do that deep sigh of relief when yeah. we can actually start recognising components within the AFDD. Absolutely. So we're going to just stick the lid back on this side because we don't want all the little things just to fall out of here. We'll turn it over and we'll have a look at what's going on with the other side of this. So we'll just put this back together again. Just clip that on there. Unfortunately, we've, uh, we've managed to bust off one of the clips. I don't think it's ever going to get reinstalled now, is it, Gary? Now we've drilled the rivets out. I don't think we could uh, go and fit this in a property in, in good conscience. So we've flipped it over now, and it's, it's quite clever because this is clearly kind of, there's a central kind of mounting chassis to this, and then you've got the two lids that come on from either side. Again, a very clever design. You can imagine, can't you, the engineers sitting around scratching their heads, wondering how they were going to fit all this into one, device. one MCB-sized device. So let's get this side oh, off now. Building the tension, I like it. Generally. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely what I'm doing here. Yeah. Not just accidentally reclipped this on. That's yeah. definitely. Just quote happening. the earlier part of the video with your great dexterity <laughs> and all the rest of it. It's just <laughs> carrying that on for us. Yeah, yeah. pop that clip off, and we're, we're in. Yeah. Very good. Ah. <sighs> <laughs> Taking the switching mechanism off with that by accident, so we'll we'll see if we can volley that back in. There we go. That's good. Now that looks a little bit more familiar, doesn't it, Gary? Yeah, mm. we can see a lot more going on in there. So point out some of the things we can see that are quite familiar to us. We can now clearly see the coil that we didn't get mistaken for on the other side uh, here and see the size of that. So obviously when that's yep. carrying hundreds or thousands of amps, creates a massive magnetic field causes the operation of the device. Yep. We've got our arc shoots. Mm -hmm. And one thing we didn't think we'd find in yeah, here, no. we thought they'd do it in some clever way. We've still got the bimetal strip. Yeah. So yeah. I'm staggered by that. Yeah. I thought it would just be a PCB. And if that's monitoring the arc fault current, I thought surely you'd use that to monitor the fault current, the normal current flow, all that sort of stuff. But actually all that original kind of old tech is still in place, which is, it's somehow reassuring, isn't it? Because some, I don't know, sometimes people sort of, they'll say something like, oh, I don't trust electronics, it all, you know, things break down, it goes wrong, you know. But actually look at that, we've got the old faithful bits of kit in there that we know and rely on to protect our installations. And it, it's amazing how, how much technology actually crammed into it, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, again, you can see just just a tiny detail down here again, uh, mounted onto this little PCB. There's a little button down there so that when you push the test button here, click, you can see there it makes contact with that and will operate the RCD uh, element of that. So let's go back to the table and summarise what we did, Joe. That was actually good fun, Joe, wasn't it? It was. I really enjoyed doing that. And what's really good is, is it was quite simplistic to get apart, but once you got it apart, it wasn't simplistic when you got inside it, was no, it? No, and very interesting, just the way it's structured as well. You've got that kind of central chassis running through the middle there with a cover on one side and a cover on the other side. You've sort of almost got the, the classic protection on one side and then the brand new, shiny new... Uh, on the other side, I thought that was really cool. And when we opened it, obviously opening the side that was more technology yeah. based sort of gave us that moment, oh, look what's missing. Mm. I was going to turn it over and you ah, oh, we're all there, there again, our old favourites, <laughs> a coil and a bimetal strip. Yeah. So it doesn't look like nothing's missing, Joe. So I, I don't know how they got the weight down, you know, slimmed it down so well, but yeah. we've got all of the technology of the double module. Yep at less weight into a single module. Absolutely. It's fantastic. It is a phenomenal bit of engineering just in itself. I mean, there's, there's so much more going on inside there than there is in your typical protection device. And you can kind of start to understand how these are going to be so valuable for protecting people's properties. Yeah. And I always like to throw you a bone, Joe. So of course, I allowed you to open it up and I allowed you to explain to the audience what was going on inside there. Maybe there's another challenge in it for you. Maybe we need a Joe Robinson training style video where we're perhaps whiteboard based okay. and you can be the master of knowledge when you can explain to me 
maybe in simplistic terms, so I can understand, so you can imagine how simple that's going to be, <laughs> you're going to have to try and explain to me what is actually going on with the technology within the AFDD section of that device. Sure, 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 yeah. Do like might need a little bit of time to research that, but yes, I think that's a great idea because I do want to know a little bit more about just how this detects arcs. How can it know that arc fault is happening? So uh, yeah, I think that's a good idea. We'll start looking into that. Because we know the AC waveform. You've done many videos on that. And we know that that waveform changes when we dim a circuit, mm. but something must be happening, obviously, for it to be seen by the AFDD. Yeah. Very Sounds generous good. kind of guy, I know, for doing that. So hopefully you've enjoyed that video presentation. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing inside one of these. And this is in a series of videos on overcurrent protection devices that we've produced here on eFix. So yep. feel free to check out some of those. And hopefully we'll see some of these people down at one of our live feeds. Absolutely. Look forward to seeing you there.